my channel. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Mel Nostalgic Runner. And we are back for another episode of Summer's House, Martha's Vineyard. And this is season two, episode nine, which is also the season finale, which I'm kind of irritated by the idea that it's the season finale, but you know what? I'm glad that they have season. I'm also glad that we're at least getting a reunion. So with that being said, um, let me give you a little bit of a content update. Um, so you're going to get this review, but then I believe I'm going to release on Saturday um, my feelings of the re the reunion looks. Um, it's not going to be as long as details my Real Housewife reunion looks because for one, you know, it's a different show. So it's not quite the same type of glam. Um, not even close to be honest. And, um, well, I'm not, you know what? Pause on that. Because, never mind. We're, we'll, I will give you my full review on that on Saturday. Um, also, too, the other thing is I kind of am giving you a review on that on Saturday because I hope, if you guys have not been supporting the show, I hope you are supporting the show or go back and support it because. It is one of the few mainly black shows on Bravo and I want them to have a season three. And from what I've heard, their, their viewership has not been the best. Um, and I understand why to a certain extent they probably do need, they probably could use a cash shake up just a little bit. Not everyone, but there's, you already know a couple of people who I, who I think need to go um, and we'll, I'm going to be reading them a little bit <laughs> at this in this review too. So there's that. But other than that, I just want um, want to give you a heads up that there is going to be another video tied to Summer House, Martha's Vineyard before the, the reunion, which that one will come out. I want to say it's going to come out on Monday. But do not be surprised if it doesn't come out till Tuesday because it is a holiday weekend and I'm going to be outside. I'm just keeping it real. And um, the way Chicago's weather has been, I'm probably going to be on the beach. And I'm pointing that way because Lake Michigan, where I stay at, is that way. <laughs> it's literally that way. So we might be over there. <laughs> anyway. Oh, the name of the episode is called The Fall Summer. And <laughs> the fact that some, the character, like the one of the cast members' name is Summer, has been told. This, this season has double entendre ridiculously because she has been a hot mess. And um, yeah, so we'll get into the review and we'll kind of do what we've been doing the past couple of episodes or how I've been reviewing it the past couple of times. I'm not going to necessarily go in order, but I am going to kind of go by character of what, how things ended. Because really, this this was treated like a season finale. Like, it really tied everything up together. And so we'll kind of go by what happened with each person. And I'll mention other people in as it, you know, is relatable and go from there. So, anyway, that was a long intro. Let's get into the review. So... We continue the episode and I forgot. And so with Nick and Bria going back and forth, Bria did her temper tantrum thing and left for the gazillionth time. Long story less long, the house is irritated with her and done with her on this, including Milo. <laughs> I feel like everyone's done with Bria when it comes to the way she acts and the way she behaves. And so Side note, in this episode, Milo totally ran away. He was over it. He was over Bria and the way that he's been kind of neglected this whole entire season. And, well, not kind of. He's been neglected this whole entire season. The way he's been acting out in Bria's room, tearing it up. And then also um, just, you know, kind of like the rest of the guests are picking up his poop. But not Bria so much. But anyway, so Bria, yeah, Milo ran away and he was missing for a good 30 minutes during this episode. And the whole entire house and cast and crew was having to find him. Um, they did find him and then Milo had a confessional 
But yeah, I forgot to include this in the review originally, so I had to call it out. But yeah, Mila was over it. <laughs> she acts the way she behaves. And so basically, and also to Bria continues to lie and say she didn't say anything bad about Nick. When they keep the producers keep reeling back that footage that she definitely was talking her ish about Nick and um, putting twenty on ten like she always does, which honestly I think Nick will forgive her for that. Um, what I think Nick will not forgive is, and we do find out later on that Nick did find out that Natalie is one who wanted to talk to Tasia. And I think when Nick goes back and sees how much Natalie had to do with all of this, he is going to tear her up at that reunion, along with Amir, as he should. Because he did not put, like, the whole entire time while this argument's continuing, mind you, Natalie is just Homer Simpson Bush, just backing away. And she literally got out of the whole entire situation scot-free as Nick proceeded to go off on all three of the women. And unfortunately, Sh Shanice and Noel, their part in it was so minimal. They did not deserve that kind of heat that Nick gave her, gave them. Um, now, he needed, he needed to say something to him, but the yelling, he didn't need to do that. Um, Bria, yeah, the, the yelling was somewhat necessary, but it should have mainly went to Natalie um, because the rest of the women were not going to even talk to Tasia about it because Bria already did that before and she was like, I'm not doing that again. <laughs> She's like, I'll talk my ish behind his back, but that's about it. Like that, that was, I feel like that was her stance in the whole thing, which is trash, but at least with Bria, we know what we're getting with her. You know, it doesn't come up as conniving because it's like, is it really that surprising that she would do something like that? No. Um, and no, I feel like a lot of the cast do not really take Bria seriously all the way when it comes to how she acts. Um, but anyway, so Nick does decide to finally forgive Bria and the ladies about it. And then again, we do see an uncut scene later on where it's explained that Natalie actually had way more to do with it than he originally realized. And Nick kind of, he, he actually straight up apologized to all three of them. He's like, so you mean to tell me I yelled at all three of y'all for nothing? And they're like, yeah. And really, not all three. <laughs> I'm sorry, Bria, you deserved a little bit of it, but not, not the vitriol of what he was giving you, but he, you did deserve a little talking to um, not the yelling, but just a little talking to. But unfortunately with Bria, everything seems like yelling to her, in my opinion. I feel like that's what it is for her. But that's neither here nor there. So that does get resolved. And Nick, for the most part, this episode um, isn't really as much in the episode. Like him and Amir do end up going to play golf later on the next day. And Amir rehashes this whole thing again because Amir in his dim-witted mind thinks that his girlfriend was trying to help out and wasn't trying to be messy. And he believed what Natalie said because I, I do remember Natalie saying that he she did tell him that the girl said to say something to Tasia. The girls did not say that. She offered to do that. And so... Um, and actually I gotta go back to remember what it was because I think he actually knows that too. I don't remember what it is, but at the end of the day, you know how I feel about Amir. I, he, I don't want him to be back next season at all. He, he, he can go. Um, but anyway, so next day, Nick and Amir, they actually go play golf together and they're not good at it. And then the subject comes up again and then... That evening, child goes down. Um, but when it comes to Nick in general, he, that was pretty much all he had going on this episode for the most part. They did play an impersonation game later on um, in the evening on one of the final nights, but I don't remember, I don't think he really had much involvement with that either. So 
yeah, that was pretty much all that really happened with Nick this episode. Um, they did do a bike ride. Um, so we got to see Nick in his like running kind of gear one last time, which Tasia, I'm sorry. I respect the relationship, but you know I like looking at Nick. <laughs> Just gonna say it. He's an attractive man, okay? He is. I'm kind of my type. But anyway, that is all I'm gonna say about that. Let's talk about, um, so we're gonna go back to the normal format of kind of being out of order, but yeah. So let's just get summer on the way. <laughs> um, again, no pun intended. So summer is still trying to like pretend everything's all good. Um, we do see an uncut scene where she finally does share with a couple of them what's going on, but she hasn't shared with everybody what's going on. But again, it's at the point where it's too little too late. She's already kind of made everyone upset because, you know, she put her hands on Noelle. She's been spiraling the whole summer. She's made it where it's been kind of not pleasant because her energy has been draining. And this is one of the few times when, when Bria and Shanice were um, talking, you know, to her, they are like, it's not really your mood, it's your energy. And... Bria said it and it sounded like it was some shade, but it wasn't. She was like, you need to go and get some spiritual cleansing or something. And I mean, I don't think she necessarily needs that. I don't think it's that bad, but I do think she needs therapy. <laughs> I mean, that that's a good start. We don't need the ayahuasca yet. Jeez. <laughs> but we already know Bria is an extreme version and she puts 20 on 10 at all times. So... Yeah, anyway, but Summer is just struggling to stay there. And so she actually ends up leaving two days before um, the last day. So I think she leaves at day 13 and she tries to say goodbye to everyone. And that's where the conversation happened between Bria, Shanice and her because she was one by one trying to say bye to everyone. But she did. OK, so as everyone's saying bye to her, as, as she's trying to say bye to everyone, there's a couple of people she didn't say bye to. So she did say bye to Nick and Amir because they were off doing their own thing for a little bit. We'll get into what they were doing and all that. Um, and then Noelle was um, upstairs in her bed and would not come downstairs. Um, because Jasmine was shocked that she was going to be leaving two days before everything's over because it was very abrupt. Um, but before, it was abrupt for most of the people, for everyone, mostly everyone. Minus Preston and Jordan. Preston and Jordan, she set them aside earlier on. I don't remember if it was the same day or day before where she just decided. It was after the argument and everything that happened with Nick and everyone that she was like, you know what? I, I can't. I've been trying to fake the funk too much. I'm ready to go. So they already knew that she was leaving um, because it was the day before. And then the very next morning, she's like, yeah, I'm going. So everyone was super surprised for obvious reasons because she didn't really share with anyone. And I don't, and I feel like a lot of people don't even know why she's leaving other than they know her energy's messed up. Alex just has this look of, I don't know how I feel about it because, you know, <laughs> her, her storm started with her, with, with him and just kind of continued because he's had the most issue. One, he's been one of the people that's had the most issues with Summer. So... He's kind of, it's, he's, it's giving, he's indifferent, um, but he's still, you know, good enough to say goodbye. Same thing with even Bria and Shanice. They're indifferent because of her, the way she lashed out at them fairly recently. Um, Jasmine's still like kind of sad for her. Even Jordan's a little indifferent and Preston's like, do what's best for you. And then um, they do, so I think um, Preston does end up calling Amir and Nick to let them know when they're on their way back um, from where they were to let, let them know that she's leaving. Well, she already left. At that point, she already left. And Nick's like, that sucks because he is really close to Summer. I think he's actually closest out of all the other people other than Alex. Like, out of all the girls, he's closest to her. And so he's like, you know, she's got to do what's best for her. Amir, I don't think really had much of an opinion on it. And also if he did, I didn't care. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, and then trying to think. 
Oh yeah, Noelle did again. Noelle did not leave or go downstairs to say goodbye to her. And I think Noelle felt like Summer should have came up to find her, and so she just didn't bother um, because. Jasmine did text Noelle while she was in bed and say, hey, are you going to come down and say goodbye to her? She was like, no. Because Noelle's so hurt by what happened. Um, as she should be. As she should be. Because I still don't quite believe that she don't remember like putting her hands on her. I don't believe that. I think that was a cop-out excuse. And from what I heard, when it comes to reunion, she's going to have a lot to answer to, Summer is. Um, I think she should have a lot to answer to, but I think there's a couple other people on this reunion that they need to press. <coughs> press like a panini. Um, but anyway, so Summer was there and then she kind of left. Um, so she really wasn't part of any of the other arguments, per se, or anything else that happened. Other than the continuation of the fight. Cause but. so Shanice. So Shanice didn't really have much going on this episode other than um she actually did do the bike ride with the guys. Oh, the bike ride with the guys is actually quite kind of cool, and I probably should have shared this. And side note, I do want Sh Shanice needs to stay next season because I like that she's one of the few girls because she's kind of like sporty and likes to do leg stuff. I like, I like that she's one of the few that does stuff with the guys. Like she went to church with the guys, even though she was probably still drunk at that church this season. Um, I like that she was playing basketball. Twist her ankle. I mean, one, of the thing, one thing about us Aries, we are very athletic, but the way we injure ourselves randomly for no reason, why we're in the middle of like some random athleticism. We're undefeated with that. Cause also Alex did that earlier this episode, uh, earlier this season too. And he's also an Aries. So it's child. <laughs> it's just what we do. Okay. We're going to be the ones who are athletic, but we're going to injure ourselves. We're just going to, we're going to power through it. We're going to rally. It's like, you know what? It's okay. It's okay. It's fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> but anyway, so she did, so outside of like the conversation that she had with Summer and in the mirror of per, impersonating um, Shanice when they were playing the, imp the impression game um, and when Alex had his event um, and, and they were doing paintings or whatever, Shanice was kind of much, pretty much kind of a side character this um, episode. Um, and I guess hopefully next season, I do want... Shanice, Shanice, I would like for you to open up a little bit more and kind of show other dimensions besides you being a party girl. Um, don't get twisted. I love that side of you. I love that you're one of the few that are trying to keep things light in this house. But um, it may be because Summer was just such a train wreck and was just such a mood drainer. And your comedic relief was actually kind of funny whenever things were going left and you were just eating your food. Because that would be me too. I'll just be like. <laughs> what? The way you're doing that. And the way you and Nick would sometimes do that together. Which, by the way, don't you ever argue with Nick again. Because I like you and Nick's dynamic. Not in like that way. But I like how you two would just like randomly be eating some food while things are going down. Like. I want to see more of that for next season, but I would love to hear more of your actual personal story too. That's outside of like, you know, the party. We got a little bit of it at the beginning, but then you buried it. <laughs> but at least you didn't do, at least you didn't spiral though. Thank God you did not spiral. <laughs> but anyway, um, that was pretty much it for Shanisa. She really wasn't in the episode too much. Um, mainly just like kind of like a side character, I would say, for most of this episode. Preston. I would say the same thing. Preston, this episode wasn't really around as much. Um, so outside of him kind of mediating the whole entire conversation with how Bria was just doing the most um, when Nick and Bria were like arguing... And then Bria stormed away and went upstairs. Um, Preston, I think he was actually getting sick towards the end because they they, sh they kept showing him sneezing while he was in his room. 
those, you know, weird in between scenes where they show everyone in their room kind of getting ready or about to go to sleep or something like that. Um, also, too, we did get to see Preston's painting um, because Alex hosted the event and the event actually seemed kind of cool. Um, it wasn't Shanice's vibe. That was the other thing that was mentioned. It wasn't her vibe, but we'll get more into the event while um, when we talk to Alex, talk about Alex. Because Alex was kind of um, a little bit more focused this episode. And Alex, your comedic relief is starting to show up and I love it. Because <laughs> he was killing his one liners. I just love that little by little with Alex receiving more of his personality show. He's, you know, he started off as just kind of calm, dry, and he's just little by little, little by little, and I love it. So. But anyway, Preston, outside of that, we didn't really get much of Preston this episode other than he did console Summer as Summer left. Um, so he was one of the first people to know that along with Jordan. Um, but yeah, that was pretty much it when it came to like Preston. Oh, and his um, kind of like his POV as well about how Amir was handling what role that um, Natalie actually truly had in the whole entire chaos that happened at the house. Um, his feedback was on point. He basically said, Amir doesn't like it, the answer he's getting, but that's what it was. And he's lashing out because he didn't like the answer. But really, he didn't need to ask about it. He could just left it alone. So... That's kind of the other thing that, um, you know, Preston shared his feedback on. But outside of that, though, he really wasn't around this much this episode. Um, oh, he did. So during the impersonation game, he did impersonate Noel. And <laughs> it was funny. Um, but that was like one of the last games in the, at, the, at the end of the episode. And I'm going to uh, so Noel. Noel... You know, we already talked about she was in her feelings about the summer situation. So there's that. And then also to um, outside of that, not much really happened with Noelle other than, you know, she was there with the girls when they were talking to Nick about how really Nally started all that. And also to the other thing that was mentioned um, was, oh, she impersonated Alex. Um, during the impersonation game, and that was kind of funny, and got and they got and we kind of all got a kick of that out of that. But Noelle, outside of that, really wasn't around much this episode um, because she was really just trying to avoid Summer until Summer left. <laughs> and we know, and actually, when you look back at the episodes after that whole thing with her and Summer happened, you notice Noelle wasn't really around as much on the episodes. And I think that's why because she was just like trying to avoid her. And that might be why we only got nine episodes now I think about it. So this might have been Summer's fault that we only had nine episodes. She was that much of a drag. I don't know why, but I know where that just popped in my head that that might have been the reason why we only had the nine episodes. Because when I look back at this season, yeah, it seemed like they had fun, but does it seem like they really had fun? It seems like there was way more drama than fun. And I don't like that for a vacation for me. And honestly, looking at this, I was like, I don't even think I would want to be on a vacation with any of these people. I mean, actually, I don't think, I know I wouldn't want to be on a vacation with any. Well, I'm not going to say it, but you're right. You could probably read what I'm thinking. <laughs> Only if you're single. Anyway, <laughs> catch that. Uh, Yeah, so... Other than that, not much there um, with Noelle because, yeah, I think it was partially because she was avoiding Summer. And since Summer was such a focus, um, literally every episode, once the fallout happened, she was just not going to be probably around as much as far as, like, scene-wise. Um, Jordan um, wasn't really around this episode as much either. Except for Jordan was wearing that short wig again. And Jordan, girl, I'm going to say this. Um, 
I like that. I like that. I, I, there's something about that short that short wig. When you're wearing that, you're giving what needs to be gave. And also, too, I feel like your energy is better <laughs> when you have that wig. I feel like that wig has a superpower. I don't know if you're like, I don't know if any, any of my viewers, any of you guys are like this, but I know uh, for me, the hair can change your personality. I feel like I got a different alias for every hairstyle I got going on. Blonde Ambition, we're, we're different. Like, yeah, my name is Sharon, but am I Sharon right now? <laughs> I mean, that's kind of how I act. Whenever I have different hair, we, we got a different personality for her. And I feel like that Bob, I know we saw that on the Freak Nick episode, but I want you to bring that back like a multiple episodes. I, I'm not even going to hold you. Um, anyway, so besides that, um, Jordan supporting um, Summer, not really much happened. Um, Bria did impersonate Jordan and Jordan got a kick out of it. She was like, you just got to use more hands more when you act like me. Because Jordan be a mood, she'd be all like. Which, that was a nice version of it. Um, but I guess come next season, I, I, I would like Jordan to loosen up more. I know she feels like she can't do that. But the s disturbing sad thing about it was because Summer was such a wreck it did come off like Jordan was more loose than she was last season. And it wasn't that. It's more or less Summer was that much of a wreck. So hopefully, you know, and I get why, because the alopecia thing's been, it's a thing, and she's going through that right now. But hopefully next summer, there's reason to be more alive um, and, and light, line up a little bit more. Especially since most of the cast, hopefully next season will be the same. And you just are adding some, a couple additions and subtracting some. Um, yeah. Um, but yeah, not else, not really much happened with Jordan. So there's that. Now Jasmine, um, our, our mainstay and mother of the house. Um, so... <laughs> Jasmine, for the most part, was definitely a huge mediator this episode. She was me trying to mediate the, the um, things with Nick and Bria at the beginning of the episode. And then also um, when the other fight broke out between Bria and Amir, she was trying to mediate that as well. And then um, Jasmine also then was in charge of the very final um event that they had which was a beach um they had a beach dinner that a chef came and catered to them and they um played the game like the impersonation game and kind of toast to martha and so that was nice and then we also did see that um jasmine did close out the truth booth um to kind of close out you know them being at Martha's Vineyard and all the rest of the cast joined her at the end. And then we saw, I think it was two, three months later. Or I don't know how many months later. I'm not even going to say that. Let's, I'm going to cut that out. But months later, because I, I forgot what it, the amount of time that passed. We do get to see a fast forward of her having um, Silas Cooper Jr. And we also got to see some hours later after giving birth... Silas Sr. surprised her, flew in from Eastern Europe and got to, you know, meet um, his baby boy. So I do like that the season ended with um, Jasmine having the first summer house Martha's Vineyard baby. So it was cute. The way that ended was very, very cute. So, um, yeah, this is going to go towards the end of the video, by the way. So, yeah. Okay, Tasmanian Hurricane. We're going to say Hurricane Bria. Bria was definitely the focus of the drama this episode. Um, because we saw at the very beginning, she, was, she got into a Nick. And then after that, <laughs> we fast forward. Actually, before we got into it with that... So, um, 
So I told you before, Amir and Nick went out to play golf. And while Amir and Nick went out to play golf, and after summer went and said bye to everyone, we had, um, the girls kind of having some girl talk about like soulmates and things like that. And Bria's like, yeah, Simon's not my soulmate. <laughs> and Noel's like, wait, what? <laughs> and Jordan's like, what? And they're like, no, he's my person. I'll probably end up marrying him. But my soulmate is in Tribeca. Like, she knew the location of her actual soulmate. I was like, and then the, the, the shady producer's like, can you give us more detail about this soulmate? She's like, no, I'm not going to do that. So it's, it's someone else that for whatever reason, they're not going to be together. But I'm like, Bria. <laughs> And you know what? I don't agree with it all the way, but I can understand where she's coming from to a certain extent. Because I feel like you either uh, are of the, you're the person who's going to do the soulmate thing and you're going to hold off until you find your soulmate who also is your person. But I will also say this, your soulmate is not always your romantic person. Because I will say this, I feel like I have a I feel like I have someone in my life who is my soulmate. But the problem is like we're not romantically involved and we'll never be romantically involved and I don't want to be romantically involved because like he's for one, we like the same parts. Like he's he's my best friend, my gay best friend. You already know who you are, but I would say he's my soulmate. Like, we were meant to meet, we were meant to be together as far as like in each other's lives and we'll never not be in each other's lives. Period. Okay? Point blank, period. Like, to this day, I can call him and be like, hey, what's up? And we could pick up where we leave off because we always do. Um, we've had some patches where we haven't been good, but typically when that happens, it's one of us is not in a good place. And... It's hurtful to see it when it's happening with either of us. Um, but I think with age, because like with age, we handle that a lot better, <laughs> I will say. Um, but I guess if you think of it that way, that a soulmate is not always necessarily a significant other partner, then I will agree with what Bri is saying. But if you're thinking of like a romantic partner, agree with Bria. It's just the way Bria said it. It's kind of wild. Because <laughs> she just flouts. Immediately said like, no, Simon's not my soul man. I was like, well, damn. <laughs> She's like, he's my person. He's just not my soulmate. I'm like, well, well okay. So there's that. Um, so after they had that conversation and everything and everyone got back and this is like before they had the dinner um I think this is even, yeah, this is before they had the dinner at the beach. Um, we have a mirror. So let's get, you know what, hold on, hold on. Let's do this right now. Let's go ahead and do this right now. So Amir and Bria, come to the front, guys. Come to the front. Come, 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 come to the front. Yeah, yeah. Come to the front. You're wrong, Bria, but Amir, you are way wrong and you are way out of turn the way you were acting this episode. I don't know what that was, but I'm not going to hold you. I'm glad that Alex checked you the next day about it. And I'm glad he actually made fun of you in the confessional about it too, because that was funny. <laughs> Alex kind of was a com comedic relief this episode, which I loved. I loved, I loved it. So there's that. But... Bria, multiple times this episode, you keep lying and saying that you weren't talking about Nick at all this whole entire time. And we know that's a lie. And what cracks me up is this last, like, one, this, like, they actually showed Shanice looking when you were saying that. And Shanice's like, girl, she lying. <laughs> and Amir, why are you women's business? 
Why are you in women's business? That's where you messed up at the very beginning. You should not be in women's business. If it's girl talk, I don't care if it's with your girlfriend. You should not be in women's business. That was your girlfriend who inserted herself in girl talk that is among the house. And you should have checked her from that to begin with and you didn't do that because you don't have any home training, clearly. Like, what are we doing? So, also too, the other thing I have a problem with you, Amir, with this episode, and honestly, I'm kind of, you know I'm over it. Like, I'm over, I am over Amir. I'm so over it, over it. Because the way you're treating your girlfriend that is non, and the way you're treating Bria, the optics don't look good for you. And Bria, let's not, let's not get twisted. Bria put 20 on 10 on everything. But the way you started yelling at her, instead of just disengaging like everyone else does. And really, I feel like, honestly, everyone needs to have to talk with Bria for real, for real. Because this, this her acting like a baby thing is getting old, is getting stale. You need to switch up the act a little bit, Bria. It is getting old. Like, I'm done with you on that. So... That's pretty much all I got for you on that, Bria. Stop that. It's really annoying. Quit acting like a child. And I'm also glad that Nick called you out saying like, because Bria, during her um, argument with Amir, starts counting to 10. Like she, and then like, <laughs> Nick is like, wait, are, what are we, a child? Like, why are you counting to 10? And yeah, Bria, why are you counting to 10? You're an adult. Of like what is this but Amir number one why are you rehashing this when it's one of the last nights of being in the house go wait you could just wait until you know you watch the show and figure out what happened I don't think it's that serious number one um I know Nick did explain that out that um Natalie had way more to do with it than like what was originally said. And I think Amir's just upset that the girls called her called it out. I'm I feel like he is not happy with the answer. And Amir in his twisted mind is saying, well, it needed to be said. No, it didn't. None of this needed to be said. And at the end of the day, Amir, you need to stay out of women's business. Like I don't care if your girlfriend, like your girlfriend shouldn't even been in that conversation, number one. Number two, once she got you involved in it, well, honestly, you should, as soon as she started to try, tried to start talking to you about what she was going to do, I would disengage immediately. I'm like, leave me out of this. Like, because, and also, or I would have checked her immediately. It's like, why is this any of your business? Like at the end of the day, Tasia will find out one way or the other. And it's not and, and Tasia is not gonna feel away because you didn't say anything because there was nothing that needed to be said. Like this was literally manufactured drama. And you bought into it because your girlfriend is so thirsty and wants to be on reality TV so bad that she's creating chaos with all black cast. It's not a good look. And the way you're giving your girlfriend so much grace, but immediately start yelling at Bria immediately and confront her in a certain type of way. Like your tone be different, okay? And that's one thing I don't like. And also too, when Nick was yelling at the girls, which, cause Nick was not right for yelling at the girls either, but he did apologize immediately. And I'm glad you did apologize too, cause you knew you're wrong. Cause you did end up apologizing after all this, but it was also cause you got checked. But, um, when Nick was, when Nick was going off on the girls during the argument, he was like, his comment in the confessional lets me know that he knew Natalie had a lot more to do with it than he's laying on. Now he's trying to lie and backtrack pretending he didn't know this. 
when he's like, oh, I'm glad, I'm glad Natalie ain't got nothing to do with any of this. I'm glad Natalie's getting away scot free. You pretty much said that. And he's like, if, she would, if you would have been yelling at Natalie like that, I'll feel away. But she felt very comfortable yelling at Bria the way you yelled at Bria. Stop yelling at me. You child. The way you said stop yelling at me, it was giving Drake. <laughs> I'm just going to say that. I'm going to leave it there. It was giving Drake. You're, um, mm-mm. So, anyway, I am glad, fast forward the next day when they went on that bike ride, Alex checked him and said that was crazy, but like, <laughs> Alex in his confessional was like, stop yelling at me! He literally sat just like that. <laughs> I about died. I was like, you know what? You did say, he sounded like that. He sounded like, I don't know, what's the, what's the guy version of Karen? What they, what they call men who are Karens? Because it was kind of like that. I don't know what the name is, though. Put in the comments if y'all know what that name is. I don't be knowing. Because I, I try not to interact with people that are like that. Like at all. Actually, I, I, I typically don't. Anyway, so, but that's pretty much it for Amir. Um, you already know how I feel about him. He can leave. Um, yeah. <laughs> His, uh, oh. The other thing I was going to mention that I have a problem with with Amir is, did you notice when he was talking about Nick, he called him a boy multiple times? It was the way he said boy. <sighs> Amir, you got some work to do. I know you're new to like the black spaces. But like, I thought you got taught this actually last season that you don't use that word, boy. And hopefully you get called out about that during the reunion. Why are you calling Nick a boy? We don't, we don't do that. We don't do that. Like, again, this is why I say you sound like Drake. I didn't like how you said that. Anyway, next. So last but not least with this episode, um, and of course I'm not doing any of this in order, so I'm gonna have to probably just like mix and master this. This episode, as I mentioned, was pretty heavily focused outside of the arguments on, um, I would say the first half of the episode was focused on Alex and Alex and his timing when it came to comedic relief. But he had an event um, that evening after they, you know, resolved everything with the argument between Nick and Bria and the girls. And also, side note, I forgot to share this. I love that. I love in Summer's POV that Summer, um, Summer had like a little bit of a confessional while um, Nick and Bria were arguing. And Summer at least shared while she was, like, she's like, I'm so confused why this argument's happening. Like, the two people that had the problem with Nick already addressed Nick. And I'm like, exactly, Summer. <laughs> Everyone else is just needing to find something else to do. Yeah. Anyway, I forgot to call out earlier on, but back to um, Alex. So Alex had an event. He had his event that basically Summer <laughs> called him out about not inviting, um, not being invited in New York because he does this event regularly in New York where I forgot what it was called, but it was like he basically does a jam session with him and his artists and then people paint while the j jam session happens. And then everyone has like their drinks. It's a pretty chill vibe. Everyone pretty much was, you know, going along with it um because also alex was like the vibe needs to change because this is too chaotic everyone needs to woosah and so everyone else from everyone was pretty much with it and good with it except for like <laughs> shanice is like this is not my vibe I, i'd rather be a bar <laughs> just like i mean i get it i get it um also side note i forgot to mention during the summer segment that um so Bria and Shanice, um, 
Bria, when it comes to the whole situation of summer, she's right. There's no, I don't think, I, I don't fault Bria when it comes to anything related to the summer situation. Um, other than the fact that I feel like she needs to be giving the energy she gave to Summer as she gave to um, Mariah. Because, frankly, Summer has posed a threat towards her more than once. But I think it's some, I think there's some other things going on with that. But we're not going to get into that. But one thing that Bria did say when Summer and um, her, when Summer was saying goodbye to everyone is, um, you know, her trying to be fake and just be happy towards every, pretend everything's okay and burying it, it's not working. It's giving fake. And it is. And I think that's the reason why I think everyone was done with her because it's like you're not even showing up as you. You're showing up at the, as this fake representation of you. And I'm gonna hold you as a viewer. It makes me think you were. That's how you you were showing up as a fake representation of yourself towards even the last season too. And so I don't even know who you are. And I'm wondering, do the other cast members feel that way? Or the people who really, really know her know who she is? Or does Summer herself not really know who she is? I think that's a loaded question, but I think towards, like, at the end of the day, that's what that is. Uh, I don't know how I went from, like, talking to Alex to talking about Summer, but I guess I forgot to mention that, too. Um, but besides the paying event, Alex, of course, was a comedic relief, and he did call out... Um, and he was also the mediator. So Alex, when... So when Bria stormed away, he went to Bria's room and talked to Bria about how you need to go down there and figure this out. This needs to get resolved so that Bria and Nick moved forward. And then also making fun of Amir for putting 20 on 10 on, a, on something that shouldn't have even been rehashed. Because really, there was no reason for this to get rehashed um, at all. <laughs> I mean, we're all... No, <laughs> it should not have been rehashed. I'm sorry. I, I really wanted y'all just to have fun the last couple of days and not do more drama. I was over it. Um, and clearly the rest of the house was too. <laughs> um, and so Alex at the moment of the argument between Bria and Amir was trying to be kind of be the comedic relief. And he also did that confessional thing. And then the next day, then he did call Amir about like, hey, when she does all that, I have a problem with how you yelled at her. Which, I'm glad he called that out because we see each other. Like, the way he yelled at her, I know he would never yell at Nally like that. And I wonder why. Anyway, so that does conclude... <laughs> season finale of Summer's House Martha's Vineyard. And again, please like, comment, subscribe to the channel if you get anything out of the content. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Melon Nostalgic Runner, and I will see you next time. Bye!